everybody? Welcome back again to Bascom's Corner. Oh, what an exciting show we're going to have as you see these, these beautiful, beautiful young ladies. And I'm talking about some strong athletes uh, played at the national level, but also what they're doing in their career, outside their career. So I'm going to have them come on. They're going to introduce themselves. Uh, two of them you've seen already. And I'm sure you enjoy seeing these two. Jaden, how are you doing today, Jaden? I'm all right, yourself. So. Everything is good. Nia, how's things going? Everything's good. Well, well you're ready to smile already because you know where this is going. I see you got your menu behind you. Don't be afraid to show oh. the colors. That's a, you did oh, not. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's how you got on. <laughs> oh, wow. See how it is. And, and, and we've got Mia Official, uh, who's on as well. And she just put the thumbs down for Manchester United. So, Mia, who's your team? Do you have a team? Chelsea. No, oh, I do not. <laughs> you were proud about saying it too. That's the name. No. No. I've been Chelsea fan for a while now. So I respect it. All right, we're gonna yeah, we're gonna figure that one out. So, so here's what I want you guys to do because we're gonna have some new viewers. If you guys can introduce yourself, uh, uh, school you go, uh, what team you played for, and then we're gonna jump in. So I'm gonna kind of interview you guys. So I got some funny little questions here. I'm gonna throw at you. So Mia, you want to go first? Mia yeah. Fi yep. Yeah. Um, I'm Mia Official. I uh, play for UCLA now. I'm, I just finished my freshman year. I'm on summer right now, so technically I'm a sophomore. Um, I'm also on the U20 women's uh, national team for USA. And yeah, all good. I also, uh, my club team was served. Uh, Nia, Nia, mm -hmm. what's happening? Tell us about you. Come on. Um. My name is Leah Christopher. I will be attending Tulsa University in the fall. I played for the Bermuda national team. I play for the women's now. And I'm 19 years old. Jaden, go ahead, Jaden. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Jaden Masters. I'm 17 years old. Um, I have played for, with the Bermuda national team for U15, U17s, and U20s. And I attend IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida. All right, good, awesome. So, hey, we're gonna jump right into it, right? As you see this, listen, my viewers, this is gonna be a long show. You can see where this is going. So, so here's my question for you, and and we are going on, you know, uh, me, I asked you first, how did you get interested in the game? You know, what what drove you for the game? You know, what interests you about this game to make you want to get into it? Um. Well, I've been playing since I was like four or five, and that's what my parents put me in it. So I didn't really have a choice at that point. But I think the really the turning point was U8, my first traveling team for soccer, and I had an amazing coach that I know that if I didn't have him, I would not be the same player as I am today. Um, I had him um, from U8 through U11. Coach Gabe, um, he emphasized just to have fun, and that was a big foundation of my game like currently and that's how it was before so I really became interested in soccer when I knew that after school all I wanted to do was play soccer I wanted to be with my team I wanted to play soccer I wanted to have fun and it just brought so much joy in my life that like I'm just so grateful for and I still continue to have fun because of him and that that foundation of that so I think that was a turning point when I knew that this is going to last a long time. Now that's awesome. And, and I can hear, and even when I was told to Jaden and these guys before, you can hear the passion coming out, right? And that's when you know that what the game means to somebody. Uh, Jaden, like, what got you involved? Like, how, how do you become interested in it, Jaden? Like, what was that moment or what sparked you? Mm -hmm. Um. Well, obviously, as a young kid, I was like always active. Like I used to play golf. Um. I used to play cricket. I did track and field. Like I did everything. You know. I honestly got to an age where I had to pick a sport that I was gonna stick with. So around seven years old, I was seven or eight. Um. A lot of my friends played soccer, so you know I was obviously around it. So I picked up on it. I was like, you know, let me try this, and then it went from there. And then I now obviously have a passion for it. Nia, is there any anybody that like uh, it could be a sports icon or anybody anybody that like really was a big influencer for you for this game? Like who influenced you? Like what? Like was it somebody out there that really influenced you to really kind of dive into this game? Um, I mean, there's a lot of players because I used to like watch football with my daddy all the time, and I would just see like good players like Ronaldo when he was at United before. 
uh, and like hearing about Pele and all the like great things he did, winning um, numerous World Cups and all that. Let's talk about let's talk about favorite teams. Yeah, do you guys have a favorite team? As we know, Mia's team is Chelsea. Why Chelsea? I, I'm I'm just me. I mean, honestly, I've. I just been I like I just grew up watching EPL with my dad and my brother, and like they chose Arsenal and I think my dad was Liverpool, but I don't think my dad really has a team right now. And I just like like Chelsea out of all the teams for some reason. I just love their style of play, like how they're playing. Um, David Luiz, like super passionate in the back, just doesn't doesn't really care about like any forty he's up against. Like he just goes all out. Um, I love Conte in the midfield. Being that connector um, as a six, and I fell in love with Hazard as the outside forward. So he was my guy, and I just continued liking that team ever since. All right, now you you you, you pick some good players here. Uh, Nia, mm-hmm. what's your team? Menu? Of course. Okay, talk to me. Talk to why Menu? Where did Menu come from? I mean, my dad used to. Well, my dad supports United. Right. Like he would be watching games all the time, and I just like would be there. And then I just got this jersey. I don't even remember how, where I got it from. I just got this jersey, and then after that, it was just my team. Oh, uh, Jaden. Honestly, my start is pretty close to Nia because <laughs> I, my dad supported. Well, he still does, obviously. He he supports Manchester United, and then my sister supports Liverpool. So I was like, well, I'm not choosing the same team as you. <laughs> so I went with my dad. You know what I mean? And then it just it just went from there, and you know, I've stuck with it since then. <laughs> What is, um, you know, you guys have played with your national academies, national teams. What is that feeling like? Mia, what is the feeling like when putting on the national team jersey? Um, I'm just, like, super grateful every time I wear it. I know, like, it's a accumulation of, like, all of my hard work I've put into this sport. And, like, all the challenges, all the extracurricular stuff that I had to pass by and not go to because of soccer tournaments or games so it's just like really like an eye opener like dang like i'm i've done the work and now i'm being rewarded from all that and now i get to represent my country and that's such a big thing especially for the united states like the full women's national team is one of the best teams in the world and to be able to represent their the sub levels from that team it, it's just something that I'm super grateful for every single time I put it on. Nia, what's what's uh what does it feel like? You and Jaden, what does it feel like? I mean, it, I don't know how to describe it. It's just like it's always an honor to like put on the jersey and be able to like represent Bermuda. Um, I agree with both Mia and Nia. Um, you know, I'm grateful every time it happens. You know, obviously playing for a national team is always an honor and a blessing um because obviously not everybody has that opportunity to do so so i don't take it for granted you know every time i get the chance it's like you know i'm thankful is there a win lose or draw after games and and i know with the passion and how much you guys put into your game do you feel if you lose a game you're let not just yourself but do you have that do you take on the whole country like wow i let my country down do you get those feelings? Have you? Do you? Do you like? What is like some of those memories were? Because I remember just playing for the national team, and after the game, I remember Claire's Davies trying to qualify for the World Cup. We played against Jamaica, and we end up losing the game, and we just had to draw to get to that next stage. And I just remember sitting on the field for about fifteen minutes and crying, and I felt so much depleted as a player. But I also felt, wow, because yeah, a lot of Bermudians came down to Jamaica and I felt like I let them down. You know, is there anything that you guys can remember where you just, it took so much out of you, where we just, you know, kind of really just took a hold of you? Uh, you know, any memories, you know, anything of that sort? Um, I would say, I think Nia, when we played Jamaica, U20 in Bermuda, and we lost 2-1. That was a heartbreak. That was a heartbreak. Like you said, you remember sitting down for 10, 15 minutes after the game crying. Yep. That was basically the entire team. You know, that, that hit us. We know we could have beat them too. And and that and that was the thing about it. We knew we should have won that game. Wow. Mia, anything? 
A anything, Mia, that you can think of? or I really, I can't think about, like, a certain game or anything, but I know, like, the pressure of wearing that jersey. It's just, like, like so many people are watching. Like, you know, even possibly, like, the full national team coach could be watching. Like, like um, even just family, friends, other players around the um, country are watching. So, it's, like, and we know what's at stake. Like, we know everyone's watching. So, I don't think we ever... Um, I can't remember like any like times that we lost now just like wow like I really did like let down you know the country or myself right. but I'm just saying like even before it's just like so much pressure that if something like if we did lose like in a final like I would de definitely take it personal and mm -hmm. like a huge let down honestly mm -hmm. <laughs> what is what do can you guys remember like what either the Prada's moment if it was a win or goal that you scored yeah, what is the proud moment? Uh, Mia, you got a, like, what's a proud moment that you're like, wow, and it just really made you feel good about your game? It could be a win or a goal that you scored. Okay, the first, okay, when I got asked this question, I immediately went to the USC game um, mm. for, U for UCLA. Um, it's just like how the season was going for me. Uh, it was kind of an up and down season, like, beforehand. Um, I was trying to get, like, familiar with the team, like where I stand um, as a starter, as a bench player, uh, playing full 90. So like, I remember like getting my momentum, like I was doing really well with the team. And then all of a sudden, like in the middle of the season, like my game dropped, my coach was on me, like, you know, you, I know you could do better. Um, and then after that, like period, I started like cranking it up. Like I was just improving, improving every game. And right. led to our last um, conference game against USC, and I like that was one of the best games I've ever had personally. And even like USC's our rivals, like with UCLA, it's well known rival. And that game was so important because it also um, was going to affect how our seating was for College Cup. So we, mm -hmm. if we bought, we were tied in points, um, in, like in the leaderboard, and if we won, then we'd get. Um, a lower seed to play in college cup so we'd have a better chance of um going mm -hmm. with the tournament yeah so um i ended up scoring a goal that like was one of my favorite goals i've ever scored um it's funny because like when i look back at the game at the uh the play i literally like am running like f like effortlessly to this like player i jump it hits my butt it goes straight to my player i bust my my butt to get forward she slips me in and it was such a hard angle, but I knew the goalkeeper is cheating more to the left. So like the inside um, pose and I just curled it back post and it was just like one of the proudest moments. Like it was sold out game. Like everyone was there. Was awesome. um, it was the goal to, um, I think it was the goal to tie it up 2-2 and we ended up winning 4-2. So, I mean, it was a great game. It's pretty good. That's good. Uh, Jade and anything? Because I know you've been injured for a while, but I'm sure you got some moments. Uh, I would really say just scoring my first international goal. Um, and that was back at U15 in Orlando in 2016. Um, so, yeah, just, you know, having that under my belt feels good. Uh, Nia? Um, it would be, well, I have more than one. So I was still, uh against Jamaica and Haiti in 2017, and we just had to beat um, Jamaica to go to the, the championships. So, like go to the USA, Canada, and all them for the first time. So like that was a big moment. Um, I also say with my club team, uh, playing in nationals. Scoring in the semifinals to help us reach the finals, which led us to win it. So, yeah. Now that's great. You know, it's um, when we look at the training that you guys do with your teams. How do you prepare yourself as a player outside the training? For instance, um, when I played pro and just continue to play every day, I ran two miles before games. You know, in the morning. 
So what is your personal regime like? Like, did you find, do you find yourself doing like overtraining or really kind of doing these extras to really prepare yourself? Because the teams do the whole routine. Do you guys do anything like, what's your private training look, you know, look like? You know, if you're preparing for a game that's, you know, in two weeks, is there anything that you find yourself doing more of? Like as far as actual, do you guys do any extras on your own or is it the training with your team enough? Because I know some of you guys' stuff is very structured. Yeah, um, for me in UCLA, like it's very structured. So I know that like what they're giving me is preparing me for the game. So okay. I like strictly on like what they want us to do, like eating wise. I, I mean, like, yeah, um, that could be another thing. Like personally, like I make sure I'm eating right. Like okay. the whole season. So my body's prepared to you know, last 90 minutes in the game, um, because that's something that, you know, your teams don't really touch on unless you really go out and ask for the help. Um, I also go to the gym a lot, like, but um, after, even after before uh, training, I find myself like in the gym, you know, working on like upper body and abs, because I know my legs is good from um, weightlifting for UCLA. Right. So I really hone in on my upper body um, to use that as, you know, a strength in the game to defend, you know, box off players and um, also use my core to like even shots, like hard curled shots to keep it, you know, all together. So that's something I do. You mentioned about nutrition. Mm -hmm. Nia, you mentioned about nutrition, right? <laughs> so you know, okay. you. And, and Nia, you mentioned about nutrition. So me, me and Nia, I'm telling you, we have a whole schedule up her about what she's eating. What's the, because you mentioned that, right? That's a part of your training. How strict, was it some things you was eating before that you found that you had to change just to get to that next level? Like for instance, was you eating a lot of junk food before and said, okay, I have to now, you know, certain things just to kind of be that athlete? Yeah, I, for sure. Like before I was eating everything and anything, like when I was, you know, U12, U15, like all the way through. And then I really thought like, dang, like this really does like affect you in your game. Like you'll feel slower. You won't feel as high energy like in the game because those junk foods really like break you down and, and your body doesn't like it either. So it's just like going against what you really want in the game, which is like your best performance. So I even started talking to like a nutritionist for UCLA to get me um, making sure I'm eating right, like breakfast, lunch and dinner. Mm. Any of you guys superstitious? Any of you guys superstitious like before games? You guys do any like got any things going on? Um, I just know and because I'm a little crazy. When I was playing, nobody could walk in front of my locker. I had some tape, a box, <laughs> and I wrote on it, if you cross this, I will get you fired. That was my hope. They could not, so I had all my game notes, mm. and these guys will mess with me. I mean, and just you should say, and I would just want to strangle them. Any of you guys superstitious? Anything that you guys like? You guys got little teddy bears? Anything like you have to, like like anything you do? Jaden, you guys like got nothing? I mean, not really, not too much. I mean, I take my risk, but that's about it. And I have a Bible verse on it, but other than that, it's a. Uh, Let's talk about college. Uh, Nia, I know you're going into college. Uh, Mia's just, you know, she's on her journey. And Jaden, that's what your that's your next step. Mm. How do you balance? Um, and this will be supporting with both of you guys. But Mia, how do you balance with studying, uh, training? Like, what does that balance look like? Like, like how important is to for your schedule? Um. Yeah. Well, for UCLA. And even like now during quarantine, I we train in the morning, so we have the rest of the day to do what we want. And okay. like even in quarantine, I make sure like the first thing I do is take a shower and I work out because like the worst feeling is when you know that you should be doing something like like working out. Like I don't know, it's just something I feel. It's like if I don't work out, like I feel really bad. Like I'm like I should have done this, so I make sure I get it out of the way in the morning, so I could just have the rest of the day to focus on school. Um, yeah, so for UCLA, after training, I have school. So that was already like a schedule going on. And after school, I was free to do what I wanted to do, which was homework, hang out with friends, all of that. Um, in quarantine, I 
uh, work out in the morning and then I usually do my homework and then hang out with friends or do something with my family. But um, another thing I have reminders on my phone to like make sure, you know, if this is due this day, like I remind her, okay, I need to do that. Cause I like to procrastinate and I'll forget sometimes. So, I, so reminders really help me. And also just keeping like a balanced mind. Like I've been meditating a lot um, mm. and during quarantine and doing yoga. So it really has helped my mind like be clear and focus on one thing at a time because it can get crazy and super stressful. And I know I don't need that in my life. So that really has helped me balance everything out. So you, you, that's a good idea with the, um, with the on your phone, you know, those reminders, what are popping up at alerts. I'm yeah. sure Nia's, Nia's gonna have our mile runs on there to pop up for. Uh, <laughs> there, there is a, you know, all you guys wanna, you're looking and one of the ambitions or things you wanna accomplish is going pro. Yeah. Um, what's, what is that, you know, they're like, like a um a journey what is your what are your plans right what does that plan look like for you um for instance you know where you want to go do you have any like anywhere in particular do you want to go pro in the us once you finish college or you know in, in europe like any any ideas where you want to go pro like what would be that you know what would that look like for you Nia, anything Nia? Um, you know, have you thought of any like teams you want to play for, or is it just go pro? Because I know it's a little different with the men's. You know, like for instance, you know, a lot of my guys, a lot of them, if they're Man U fan, they see these these avenues. They want to go to England, right? They they want to go that England pathway. Have you guys thought of of like the areas you would love to play if you got a chance to go pro? Um, I wouldn't mind going to England, but like I have an open mind about everything. So like, well, like, wherever I end up, I'd probably be okay with it, depending on like what's happening with the team and stuff. Mia, anything or Jaden? I mean, I agree with Mia. Like, well, like like Mia said, she's open minded. I'm the same way. I mean, honestly, whatever happens, I feel like it's gonna happen for a reason. So. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'd say like it would be cool playing like in the U.S. So my family could possibly like come watch the games or on TV. Um, and it's just like home soil. So build more fans while being on the national team would help too. Um, but it would be really cool to play in Europe, like Barcelona or hopefully Real Madrid or something, something big or PSG. Um, those are big ones that I hope to be on one day to better my development. How do you guys deal with with, with traveling? Yeah, um, uh, Jaden, you've been in Florida for a while. Nia, you've been up here in Baltimore through the US. Me, obviously, when you guys with the national team or just being away from home, how do you deal with it? Is it anything you guys do to kind of remind you of, of home, of family? Uh, is it anything that you carry with you uh, of that thought, you know, I know that when I was traveling and, you know, I used to take a picture of my kids just so I wouldn't miss them. So, you know, it just mm -hmm. gave me that sense that my family is here because I know that's a strong backbone, especially when things are not going well, you just feel that they're there, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, anything you guys do, is it like a, a you know, just to stay connected because you're so far from home. Yeah. When you I always um, keep my Bermuda flag on me. Okay. Um, to just know, like, you know. I'm doing this to make my country proud and my family proud and, you know. Yeah, I'd say, like, I don't really have anything that I bring, but it's just, like, this drive, like, in me that, like, I'm away from family because I'm doing it for them, too. Like, mm -hmm. it just comes from, like, more internal than, like, uh, material things. So, like, I just think whenever I'm training or I'm even in my hotel, I'll call my dad or my mom like, just to catch up like what they're doing and how I'm doing. But like, other than that, like I just use that as like fire, like being my best and making sure I'm taking, like not for granted the opportunity that I'm away from home and making the most of it. So, yeah. Are you guys close with your teammates? Nia, are you close to, uh, are you close to your teammates? You know, like. 
Well, with the Bermuda team, yeah, I'm close to like basically all of them. Um, my high school team, we was pretty close, but like everybody had to learn like little circles. But like we just played together. So is there is there like the sense of because I'm sure if you guys I'm sure when you're traveling, you know teams, and I know you have some funny people part of your groups. I know you do. Somebody's Jaden, I could see you, Jaden. Being like the team comedian, I'm yeah. not. I'm not. I'm not. With people like uh, the things that we guys used to do, I mean, getting the hot rub and stuff, and making sure you know, you know, we used to rough them up. So, what is it? What is it like when having that team bond? How important, like having the team bond, team chemistry, because you're with your players most of the time. Like, how important is that? Have that chemistry. I feel like the better bond you have off the field, the better connection you're gonna have on the field. The uh, and the one thing I noticed, and Mia, from watching uh, you guys tournament U20, mm -hmm. and what I did notice, and even when uh, Bermuda was in, and even win, lose or draw, one thing I could say about the women's game, and I love the women's game for many reasons, is that you guys are emotionally and socially connected to the game. And it's so strong of a bond, and I, I know and I feel that's what's missing from, from the men's game. Yeah, there's a different connection. I mean, do you guys, is there, a, you know, do you sense that? Do you do you see, because when I'm watching you guys and I'm watching the games and um, like I can feel, I feel so connected, right? I, I feel even connected to your team. When I'm watching Man U or watching Liverpool, you see a different connection. It's like a business deal, right? It's like a business transaction. Um, so, and that's more, not so much a question, but more what I'm seeing, you know, and just from you saying is that if you don't have that connection, because it's what that team puts together is what you guys put out. Um, just going to kind of, um, ask you guys a couple of questions. And one of them, if you had to describe yourself in one word, one word, if, if you had, what would that word be? Now, I'm putting you on the spot now. What would that word be? Nia, you got that blank look, so I'm not going to come to you first. <laughs> just, just, what, just, Jayden, yeah. what would that one word be? If you had to describe yourself, what would that one word be? Uh, I would say I'm pretty determined. Determined? Mm-hmm. Okay. Nia? Why, do you, why do you seem like you had a question about that? No, I said nothing. I just said determined. Nia, what's that one word? Nia. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> that's your... You're coming to me last. Is it, is it I don't know? There's... No, no, no. Okay, that's all right. Because that's three words. <laughs> okay, we're gonna get back to you, Mia. Mia, what's the one word? And I know it's tough, right? I I know it's tough. Yeah, it but one word. I'd say grateful. Yeah. Grateful? No, that's no, that's good. That's good. Uh, Nia, we're back to you, Nia. Um. Hmm. I'm in. Um, committed. Here we go. All right. Okay. I, I, I ain't gonna say nothing else. All right. So this is my last question for you guys. First of all, I appreciate you guys being on. Greatest accomplishment. What will be when it's all said and done? What would that greatest accomplishment be for you? What would, when you look back, when you're going through this journey, what would your greatest accomplishment be? What do you want? Yeah. That accomplishment to look like for me, you know, I, I mean, I would think I could change the world. My greatest thing would be affecting and empowering when I look back and say, that's what I wanted to do from when I started pro. I wanted to affect many players. And that's what I look back now. What would that look like for you? Would it be playing pro, completing that task? Like, what would that be? What would be the greatest accomplishment for you? So yeah, I'm trying to get you to forecast, yeah, what that would look like. Anything, Nia? Anything? Or, e either one of you? Nigga, go. I'll go after. Me go? Yeah, go ahead. What would they go? Um, I would say being someone that like younger girls would be able to look up to. Hmm. Um, I would say 
you know, give back to basically all the people who have gotten me to where I am today or, you know, where I get in the future. So basically give back and impact somebody's life, I would say, on my two main goals. I would say using my platform to, like, bring aware like how expensive soccer is and how limited some people or some kids aren't even allowed to like be able to play this sport because it's so expensive. So I really hope like after everything, like all that the sport has like taught me about life and like lessons and friendships. I have so many friends in the sport that I hope after like my soccer career, I can really like give back to the communities that don't have a lot and to help them, you know, or like create organizations or something that help fund um, areas where families need more money to help fund for their kids to play sports like soccer, which is an expensive sport. So that would be my biggest thing to inspire others to play. No, that's awesome. So I'm, I've got one more. I wouldn't know my questions of, of, of my, my list. So I'm throwing this at you because this is going to be the final one. I want to, because it's a lot of times we don't get to say thank you, right? So what I want to do is that I'm going to ask each of you, I want you to take even if it's 10 seconds, 20 seconds to get a chance to thank either that person, that group, or that kind of really you want them to know how special they are. It could be your family, it could be your coach, because it's very important, right? I enjoy celebrating lives and celebrating accomplishments. And when we move sometimes and sometimes we get to that space where we're like wow you know thank you like 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 me i want to thank my grandmother right for everything she put some licks on me i mean she gave me so much licks but i'm i feel so grateful of it because that's was a part of this growth so i'm gonna give you guys some time you know um and just kind of that person people whichever that you want to thank and that you feel that you know what that's 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 who I want to talk to. That's who I want to send my thank you to. Uh, Jaden, you got somebody? You got? Can I not go first? <laughs> okay, Mia, we're gonna <laughs> throw at you first. Okay, can, can I thank multiple people? Yes, yes, it's cool. No, it's cool. Okay, I would say I would like to thank my coach Gabe from CSC U8311, who introduced me to this sport, who made me fall in love with this sport because I wouldn't be here. All that I have accomplished without him. I want to thank my family, including you, David, for um, supporting me and helping me through challenging times in soccer and in my personal life um, and just accepting who I am uh, fully. So that was really important for me to be who I am. I want to thank my friends who take me away from the sport because I know it consumes a lot of my life. So being able to get out of the sport and really take in life um they are a big part of that so i thank them as well too awesome uh nia um i would like to thank my parents and my mm -hmm. coaches my parents only because like i wouldn't be here without them and they're in the position that i am currently um my coaches because they've played a major part and like in me pursuing what I want to do, especially in football. So, yeah. Awesome. Jaden? Um, I would like to thank my family, my coaches, obviously parents and friends, just to just for getting me to where I am today, especially my family, well, my parents, you know, obviously sacrificing everything to allow me to fulfill my dreams and, you know, go, I guess, to better myself um, on a personal level and uh you know academic and athletic standpoint uh, awesome first of all i want to well, i'm going to thank you guys for being on here um and i appreciate your time i appreciate the hard work you put in to be successful also i'd like to thank the supporters who's been watching bascom's corner and my three stars i have here um i want to congratulate you guys for getting this far in the journey because it's not easy and for me I'm hoping, I'm hoping at the end of the day, the, all your accomplishments are met. Uh, I can only ask you to to push on, strive your hardest, and please, everybody, I guess you're going to have to root for a um, menu now. We're going to change Mia to a menu fan at some point. But thanks for coming on, you guys. I'm looking forward to chatting with you some more. All right, I appreciate you guys' time. 
All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.